All right, guys, reboot 2.0. Hopefully this works. So sorry about that. I don't know what happened. It's weird. It's really weird. So welcome back. Hopefully I can get you guys back on here and we can continue our game. Let's see. And yeah, that's muted. Okay. Welcome back. Hopefully you guys can hop back on here. Hi, Haley. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? I changed out my microphone, so hopefully that will help. Welcome back in, guys. Let me know when you get here so that we can continue this game. I can't remember what question we were on. I think we had just finished one. Okay, good. Awesome, Haley. Thank you. I think we had just finished one, and I can't remember which team got it. Eight. All right. Welcome back. Haley, you might be the, the lone wolf <laughs> playing the game all by yourself. <laughs> Hopefully, we can get everybody back in here. I'm going to text. Oh, there you are, Ethan. It's Is it loading? Yeah, it's loading for me. Is it loading for you? Yeah, that's just what we need is some more uh, technological difficulties, right? <laughs> oh, goodness. All right, I'm going to text our class. It's, okay, Ethan. Ethan, is it loading? I'm hoping it's loading for you guys. Let me know. We've got two people in here. Hopefully we get everybody back. We'll see what happens. If not, Ethan... Your team might just win by default. Okay, it's working. Sweet. All right, we'll give everybody a quick minute here. Let me text the class and let them know that we're back up and running. There weren't very many people from our class, though. Running. I might have to make a, uh, a remind just for the people that want to do Jeopardy. That'd be kind of fun. And then that way I could talk to kids that aren't even on my team uh, or my, uh, in my class. Let me do that. I'm going to call us uh, the YouTube, YouTube party. <laughs> That's what you guys are going to be called. Okay, and then I'll put it in the comments. Quentin, welcome back. Haley says it's not a big deal, but actually, oh, okay. Oh, Holly, oh, like, oh, like, hey, Hol Holly Berry? How I, I could never pronounce her name. I'm so sorry, but like, ho more like Holly, or is the is the first part like Hall or Hale? Let me know. Uh, because I definitely want to pronounce your name right. Absolutely. Okay, so in order to join our new remind, you can text to 81010. This will be for YouTubers. And then put this in the message. That way, everybody could participate in the final Jeopardy. I like that idea. Didn't even think of this idea. Here we go. So if you want to join in on that, and then that way, if this ever happens again, I can text you and, and let you know that we're back up and running. Like being like the beginning of happy. Oh, okay. So like, hail, hail. I'm so sorry. I wish I could hear you say it. We might just have to like do a video call sometime so I can hear you say it. It's like if you're going to say happy but replace. Okay, so Hallie. Hallie. Hallie Berry. There we go. Sorry. Just, I, yeah, a little slow this morning. <laughs> All right. Hallie. Very good. I love that name. That's so pretty. Okay, so uh, NNE, we got you. All right, sweet. So if you guys want to join the Remind, I made a new Remind just for special YouTube people 
So you can text 81010 and then message, put this in the message, the at DF2734. And then that way you guys can participate in the final Jeopardy as well, if you'd like. Okay, so I think, um, I, I can't remember who won that last one. We're going to let team two go ahead and, well, no, I, I think Ethan had the board with team one. So team one, go ahead and tell us, um, uh, Hallie, 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 yeah. I'm going to have to keep reminding myself. Okay. Uh, Ethan, let us know what you would like, and we will get rolling with this game. Hopefully, everybody else will pop on here. Okay. So, we're, right now, we have Team 1 at 2,200, and we have Team 2 at 600. So, Team 2, I'm rooting for you. Get back on this board. All right, Ethan says tech innovation. All right, tech innovation for 400. Here we go. Mariners relied on blank blank to help find their way at night. Hmm, a vocab word for you. Let's see if you guys can get that one. Hmm, that is true, Ethan. That is true, but it's not the vocab word that I'm looking for. What is the vocab word? And Tuan, that is true that they use that, but there was another thing that has two words, blank, blank, that they used at night. Ah, there you go. Quentin and Tuan, very good. The astronomical chart. This was a new thing that was going on, and um, it helps them out at night. Both are true, though. They did use latitude and longitude. They did use the astrolabe. This is just the one we're looking for, astronomical uh, chart. So basically, it's just a chart of what the sky looks like. Okay? All right. So, Quentin, you guys now have the board. Let us know which one you would like. Let's see, we've got uh, 400 for the last two and then all of these still on the board. So let me know which one you would like. And if you're just logging back on, I made us a special remind just for YouTubers so that uh, even if you're not in my class, you can participate with the Final Jeopardy. So check out up in the comments for what to text if you would like to join. All right. Uh, Maritime empires established for 400. Explain the encomienda system. Somebody was talking about this earlier. Maybe they can give a little bit more details. Sometimes the comments show up over here better than on my computer. It's weird. Okay, Tuan says, Spanish guys get land. Spanish guy want workers. Spanish guy <laughs> forces people to work for them. Okay, yes, that's true. And then Ethan says, it's a system used in Spanish colonies. Uh, I, I think you mean differed or, oh, derived. Derived from the Mita system, which uses coerced, forced labor in order to get young men to work. Yeah, so that's right too. Tuan says workers are either indigenous people, African slaves transported. Okay, good. So Tuan, even though that was a little bit, uh, <laughs> you know, easier uh, said and not quite as eloquent, I'm still gonna give you guys the point um, because you are right, basically. Ethan's is a little bit more eloquent, um, but both are right. Okay, very good. All right, so Quentin, you guys still have the board? Yeah, so remember there are a couple different systems. We have the Hacienda system, the Encomienda system, 
and the Mita system. The Mita system was the one that came from the indigenous people and it was just carried over into uh, what the Spanish wanted to use. So all of those would be coerced labor systems. They have little subtle differences, but they're all coerced labor. All right, Ashley said it was made from the Spanish conquistadors to protect them in exchange of work, protect and yeah. Oh, okay, so to protect the indigenous people, sure. Um, and uh, yeah, um, Ethan, I'll think about it. Uh, then we said, uh, the called one says, uh, wait, so considering this is a DBQ, all this information could be useful for context, outside evidence, but other than that, it's a huge portion of the, uh, right, exactly. So on the DBQ, you will have the documents that you're going to be using to write the majority of the DBQ, but it's important to review the content as well because of outside evidence and because of context. So yeah, you're exactly right. Uh, so basically in the weeks to come, uh, once we get done with doing our review, which my class is finished reviewing next week with all six units, then I'm going to be starting to do more on like, how can you set up your notes? How can you study specific things for that outside information? Okay. And then NNE says the in-command system was a form of course labor used on the indigenous though it didn't last long since the Catholic missionaries abolished it due to how harsh it was. Good. All right, Quentin would like maritime empires maintained. Here we go for 400. Explain one example of religious syncretism in the Americas. Okay. Ethan says voodoo was a religion derived from native traditions in Jamaica and Catholicism. Yes. Very good. And Hallie, I got it right. Hallie, the indigenous uh, mixed with the new incoming Catholicism. Yeah. So that's true. So we have voodoo, Santeria, and this one, I, I hadn't even remembered that one, but it was in the textbook. So you might want to check that out. Um, it was one that was syncretism in Brazil. How many points was that for? I haven't even been, I think that was 400. All right. So we're looking at, oh, wait, I got to give that to this point. Uh, so team one has 2,600 and team two has 1,400. So still anybody's game uh, on here and we'll see what we got left. So we've got all of the 100s to 300s left. Go ahead, Ethan, let me know which one you want. Um, and then NNE says an example of religious syncretism in America's is the Virgin of Guadalupe. Yeah, that's another one. Absolutely. Incorporated indigenous practices with Christianity. Awesome. One other thing that you guys might want to think about, if you're not a very fast typer, there are a bunch of free typing programs online. If you need one, email me and I'll send one out to you. But if you Google it, you usually can pull one up. And you can practice typing so that when it comes to the DBQ, you can write it faster. All right, Ethan wants exploration for 300. Explain why Manila was important. Explain why Manila is important. Very good. So Tuan says silver ships to China. Yes, that's where the silver galleons went to in order to trade with China. So very good. Uh, that one was 300. It was kind of like the stopping point in between coming from Central America to going and taking the silver to China. That's where the silver merchants would come and get the silver from the Spanish. Very good. Uh, Ethan says it was important trading port between America and the Ming. Yeah, very good. 
There is also a really good podcast on the silver trade. If you uh, Google silver trade podcast, it should come up. And I have my class listen to it every year. It's really good. It talks a little bit more about the details of what happened to the Native Americans. So if you're interested in that, definitely check it out. Uh, and I can email you a link if you want, if you email me first. Okay, uh, so let's see. Ethan, no, Tuan, the board is yours. Tuan's, uh, yeah, Ethan, it, it made sense. It made sense. It's okay. Calm down, calm down. I know it's a little, it's a little unique that you got some competition, <laughs> but I'm going to, I'm going to make it fair. Tuan's made sense. Yours definitely was a little bit more sensical, but, um, just keep, keep chugging away here. Okay. Uh, Tuan, we still have all the three hundreds left except for exploration. All right. The Claude one says, Claude one, what's your name? So I can call you by your name. Uh, was the silver drain where all the silver from Brazil, uh, I believe in Japan went to China. Okay. So yeah, it would have come from China though. Japan would have just traded right away. So it wouldn't have gone to Manila first. I don't think, cause that would have been out of the way. Um, but it was coming from Central America and Peru mostly. And yes, inflation was a part of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> oh, Tuan and Ethan are getting at it. It's funny. Okay. Tuan maintained for 300. All right. Let me mark that off so I don't forget. Okay. Maintained. Mar uh, maritime empires maintained. Explain triangular trade. You have to have all three parts of triangular trade. All right, let's see what we got. Ethan says it was the slave trade, Europe trade, and gun trade between Atlantic oceans. Tuan says Europe trade, gun, and import crops. Lots of raw resources from America. Oh my goodness, y'all are cracking me up. Uh, Ashley, trade between Africa, America, and Europe. Good, okay. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, Hallie says, okay, so Africa sent slaves to America and America sent stuff to Europe and they traded to Africa again. Haley, uh, sorry, Hall <laughs> Hallie, Hallie, there we go. Hallie, yes, that's the best one that I've read so far. So I'm going to give you guys the points for team two. That was 300. Very good. So remember, triangular trade, it goes from... Um, the Americas, they're taking raw resources to Europe to manufacture. Europe manufactures it, comes down to Africa, picks up slaves, drops off manufactured goods, and goes over to the New World. So, Tuan, or, uh, Tuan are you picking for your team? I can't remember. Or is it Quentin? One of you two, I think, give me uh, give me your, your pick. Uh, Tuan says, new work, get crops and slaves. Okay, yeah. Oh, new world. Okay. New world. Uh, NNE says the triangular trade was similar name to the transatlantic trade. Yeah, true. So it's the same thing, basically, because transatlantic is just going across the Atlantic. But transatlantic mostly refers to the slave trade. So that would just be from Africa to the new world. Uh, <laughs> this is some cap, huh, Ethan? <laughs> I think you mean crap. <laughs> I love it. All right, Quentin, Quentin or Juan, either one. Go ahead, Quentin. Let me know. Doesn't matter to me. I don't care who, who picks as long as you guys don't care. <clears throat> you had to explain it, Ethan. I mean, Hallie, Hallie, yes, Hallie, <laughs> Hallie just did it better. You know, she just, she, she hit it on the head a little bit better. I mean, you know, there's a, there is definitely a, learning curve to this because if you write too much then you're not going to be first but if you don't write enough then you may not have enough details it is true all right uh guys i'm just going to let you i'm going to go ahead and pick for you i'm assuming you're going to want 300 so i'm going to do um 
maintained established or maritime and time established. During this time, what was China's position on trade? So think about from this time frame, 1450 to 1750, what is China's position on the tr global trade that's happening? Very good, Ethan. Yes, they did not promote foreign trade. Remember, after the voyages, and I've I can't ever remember how to pronounce his name. Um, they kept foreign trade out because there were too many Christians coming in and the Christians were like uh, the Christian missionaries were converting Chinese people and they were not being tolerant of other religions. And so the Chinese started to keep outsiders out. Very good. All right, Ethan, yay, you got these points. I know you're excited. All right, so... <laughs> Uh, Ethan has the board. Let me know what you want. Uh, yeah. So the opium wars will result after this because they're trying to keep all the trade out and the British want to get in. And then he says China's position was less since it didn't involve itself. Yeah. So it's wanting to keep away, right? So it is dealing with the silver trade, but it's not on like the global scale as everybody else. Good. Uh, isolation was the name of the game. Okay, tech for 300. Here we go. Long-term effect of new tech was. What is a long-term effect of new technology? This one should be interesting. See what you guys come up with. Yeah, Tuan says exploration. Ethan says there was a new age of exploration. <laughs> Ethan, we got to work on your typing skills, buddy. Uh, yeah, Tuan, you got it. Exploration or the expansion of global trade as well, but exploration would count as well. All right, so either one of these could be could work. All right, that was 300. All right, Tuan, go ahead and give us one that you would like to go for. So far, we have team one with 2,900 and team two with 2,300. New exploration, eventually imperialism, good. Um, and then he says, long-term effect of new tech was the conquering of people. True, yeah, that was also one. They were able to conquer people. Ashley says being able to know your location. Yep, absolutely. And Ethan says, furthermore, as new technology progressed, it led to the onset of the industrial revolution. Yes, I love that one. That's a good one. Uh, very good. All right. Tuan says one word answer. Go zoom. Highest left. Okay. <laughs> Who are you talking about? Go zoom. Okay. Highest left. Let's see what we got. Uh, we got Colombian exchange for 300. Let's do that one. Explain one effect of the Colombian exchange on the old world, meaning Europe. Andre, are you even on a team? <laughs> I need to put you on a team. <laughs> Let's see. Andre, I'm going to put you on team. I'm going to put you on team two because they're missing a person. All right, let's see what we got here. Uh, who was the first one? It killed to sickness. Oh, it led to sickness. Uh, in the old world, like in Europe, mm, not, not too much, no, because remember, they're the ones that have the immunity. Tuan population growth because of new food. Okay, so if you put those two together, yes, that is true. Um, they did have population growth. Remember, they're getting new foods from the new world that helps the diets of the people in the old world. So remember, Ethan, old world would be Europe. So that's why um, the natives would be new world. Uh, Ashley, that's true. They got richer. Claude one says, Columbia Exchange would bring the great dying. Okay, that is true, but that would be in the old, uh, that would be in the new world, not the old world. 
Josue is back. All right, Josue, welcome. Nutrition, yeah, that's good. Effective plumbing exchange, new foods, yes. Old world, yeah, all right. Yes, called one. Tell me your real name so I can put you on a team and I don't have to write that all out. <laughs> uh, they all died. <laughs> Ethan, you're funny. Ethan, Ethan is, is a little bit upset, I think. He's got some competition today. All right. So uh, right now we have team one with 2,900, team two with 2,600. We have all the 100s and 200s left. Tuan, let me know which one you want. Claude one is Gary. All right, Gary, I'm going to put you on team one. So you'll be on team one. All right. Let me know what you guys want. Uh, it's not a competition. It's just one. Oh, now come on, Ethan. There have been some other ones that have, have done very good today. You guys have come up with some really good answers today. All right. Columbian exchange 200 explain one effect of the Columbian exchange on the new world. Now is your chance for all of those ones that had to do with the new world. Type it in there. Okay, let's see who was first. Tuan says dies. <laughs> okay, NNE says the new world was exploited. They got sickness. They died. Very good. <laughs> All right, Tuan, I'm going to take the, wait a minute. Uh, let's see, the clawed one, The that one, uh, Gary, right? I'm going to take yours, uh, the great dying die. Uh, that's a little bit too short, Tuan. Come on. All right. Uh, so that's 200 for team one. Ethan, you have the board. Go ahead and let us know what you want. Oh, it's a close game today. I like it. I like it. Um, we got smallpox, new slaves. Yes. Buffalo go dead because of the horses. Oh, sorry, Ethan. Let me click back to the board. There you go. Uh, led to mass population decrease. Yes, very good. 90% in some locations. Awesome. You guys are rocking today. Okay. All right. I like it. So we got all of them in 100 and 200, Ethan, except for Columbian Exchange. So all of these were right here. I wish these, I could find a way to delete these easily. I don't know. I'll have to try to figure that out in all of my spare time. I feel like I'm working more now than when we were in school. I don't know. Do you guys feel the same way? I feel like it's more work now. Maybe because we're using technology more. I don't know. All right, Ethan, what do you want? What do you want? Did you say over here? Uh, da, da, da. All right, I'm just going to give you a tech for 200 because I know you like to go for the highest stuff. Name three advances in technology that allowed maritime empires. Three advances or inventions in technology that allowed for maritime empires. Okay, you need three. Ethan's got one. Uh, let's see. Okay, so Ethan said, uh, oh, Ethan, you were just missing one. And then he got it. Latine sales, astrolabe, and compass. Very good. And then he, uh, you are on team two. So 200 points goes to them. Very good. All right. We're still neck and neck. Okay, so we got the caravel, latine sail, compass. Yes, all of those. Stern post rudder. Uh, flute, I think that's how you say it, Karak uh, or Karak, and Compass and Astrolabe. Yeah, very good. All right, we're just going to keep knocking these out. Tech Innovation for 100. Here we go. The knowledge of wind power map making. Uh, I think I did that wrong. The knowledge of wind power uh, and map making. That's what it's supposed to say. Improved navigation. What is the term for map making? What is the term for map making? Ethan, what do you mean? Oh, 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 at 1030. Oh, yeah, that's right, because you guys have another class. I forgot about that. Yeah, we ran a little bit over because of this. Yeah, Ethan, if you got to go, it's okay. Your team can hold it down. 
Uh, let's see. Gary says, this is great because I type around 100 words per minute. I actually took a little DBQ and finished within 10 minutes. Oh, that's good. All right. Ethan says, cartography. Whoop, whoop. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. So 100 points goes to them. We're almost done, Ethan. We only have a couple more left. But um, if you got to go, it's, it's fine. Okay, let's keep going. Exploration. We got 200 left. Let's do that one. Explain the theory of mercantilism. Explain the theory of mercantilism. Nix, I will get to your question in just a minute. Bye, Tuan. You guys rock today. Okay, so Gary says the theory is that you want to limit imports and maximize exports. Yeah, very good. So you're maximizing the amount of goods that are sold out of your country and you are keeping the majority of wealth within your country. So very good. Those points go to you guys. Let me address this quick question about the DBQ. Uh, Nick says, does outside evidence need to be from the same time period or can it be from a different time period? They haven't really said, I think you should try to keep it within the same time period. All the examples that I've seen, keep it within the same time period. If you absolutely cannot do that, then you can try to do it outside of the time period. Like, um, I can't, I'm trying to think of an example. Uh, I'll, I'll get back to you on that one. But I, I would try to keep it within the same time period because that's how I've seen it written in the past. Uh, and you know what? I'll check on the, the rubric again and see if it says on the rubric because I can't remember. Okay. Trade only with the mother country. Ashley, that's part of it too. Yes. And then the theory of mercantilism, rivalry with state competition. Mm -hmm. Limited around the money of the world. Everyone wants the pie, but can only have it. Okay, good. Yeah. So basically you're keeping the wealth within your country. All right, let's go for exploration 100. Prince Henry the Navigator is known for, Prince Henry the Navigator is known for, <laughs> Gary says, I don't know. Okay, well, hey, that's honest. You're gonna learn today. You are going to learn today. NNE says he is a Portuguese funder of navigation. Yeah, very good. So he is the big seafaring funder of seafaring expeditions. He's basically searching for a better route to India. Josue says navigation. Ha <laughs> ha, you're funny, Josue. Yeah, it's in the name, right? It's in the name. All right, NNE is team two. So team two, we got 2,900 and team one with 3,400. All right, here we go. So we got uh, Columbian Exchange for 100 we have left. We'll do that one. Explain the cause of the Columbian Exchange. Explain the cause of the Columbian Exchange. Okay, uh, Atlantic slave trade. Mm, I would say you probably would want to use that as an effect more so. Try to think about like why it started. What was what was the reason why it even started in the first place? Uh, let's see. Let me go back up here. It's lagging coming into my computer. And then he says the cause of Columbia Exchange was the exploring of the new world due to the Spanish going there. Yeah, very good. So exploration is basically the cause of the Columbia Exchange. Very good. And then E, you are on 200. So now we've got 3,000 for the um, group two and 3,400 for group one. Okay, very good. So we got exploration, the need for resources. Yeah. All of those things would work. Okay, let's go with this one. We got that one left. While the Europeans were expanding, the Japanese were blank. 
what were the Japanese doing while the Europeans were expanding? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ah, very good. All right. We've got some specifics over here with NNE. I don't know why it's not coming up here on my, oh, there we go. Uh, yes, isolationism and uh, they're restricting trade, too many Christian missionaries coming in. Very, very good. Awesome. All right. So NNE for team two. Oh, we are neck and neck. Team one has 3,400. Team two has 3,200. All right. Here we go. Okay. So we have Maritime Empires established. Define indentured servant. Define indentured servant. some reason it's popping up over there first. Good, Gary. I'm glad you remember more than what you thought. That's that's always a good thing. <laughs> that is always a good thing. All right. Hallie says, a servant that needs to owe something and pays over time. Very good. Hallie is on team two. So you get a 100 for that. So you guys are at 3,300 and team one is at 3,400. Oh, they're closing in on you, team one. They are closing in on you. And we only have two questions left and then final jeopardy. So uh, maritime empires maintained. Define a joint stock company. Define a joint stock company. Okay. And then he says, this was where empires put trading post empires there to get resources. Kind of. That's part of it. Uh, Gary says a company with joint stocks. True, but you got to explain it. Uh, the British East India Company. Yes. But what what is the um, the good and I guess, well, the positive thing about a joint stock company? Why would people want a joint stock company? Think about that. Yeah, it is the British East India Company. Yep, that's a good example. Okay, good, Ashley. So it's a company with many people that owned it in case there was a downfall. Very good. So basically, it was owned by investors and they would share in the profits. They would also share in the downfall. So if you just have one investor and the company fails, then that person has lost all of their money, right? But if you have a bunch of investors and they share in the profits and they also share in the losses, then if it fails, they haven't lost their entire life savings. So that's how you can uh, explain that. All right. So let's see. Who was that? That was Ashley. Ashley is on team one. So we have 200 going to team one, putting them at 3,600. Team two is at 3,300, still neck and neck. All right. So empires, main, uh, maritime empires maintain, define capital. This would not be the capital of a city, okay? Keep that in mind. Find capital. Yes, and any, uh, they would share profits with investors, yeah. Okay. Holly says money, yeah, it is money. But what kind of money? What are we, what are you using this money for? It is income, but what would we use capital for? Think about economics. Investment. All right. Okay, Tina. Tina, I didn't even have you on a team. I didn't even know you were watching. Yeah, so uh, uh, I'm going to put you, Tina, on uh, team two because they're down a person right now. Um, so define capital. That would be invest money to invest like material wealth to gain more wealth, okay? 
All right, so we are up to, here's our final scores before going into Final Jeopardy. Team one has 3,600 and team two has 3,400. So we're very close. Let's look at the Final Jeopardy category, challenges to state power. All right, so let me see who is on their mind because that's how we're gonna communicate. If you've not joined the YouTube party remind, uh, this is how I'm going to communicate with kiddos that are not in my class. And if you are in my class, you can still join as well. I'm trying to find, if you scroll up to my comment, I have how to join uh, in there. I don't know if it's still on there or not. I think it is. Um, let me find it for you real quick and then you can join. But let's see, right now I have Halle in here. Um, you can do it for team two. I also have NNE, so they're all on team two. I need somebody from team one to join the remind so that we can talk about the final Jeopardy. Let me get the settings here on how to join. You would text 81010, so you're gonna text that. And in the message, you would write at EF 2734. So if you're on team one or team two, either one, and you want to be able to um, be involved with the final Jeopardy, go ahead and get connected through Remind. And Halle and Enony, I've got you guys on there. So you guys can text me for your team. And then uh, Ashley, Nix, Daniel, if he's still here. Gary, you guys can uh, text me for your team once you get on the remind. Uh, Ashley says, my phone isn't working. Okay, no problem, Ashley. Uh, Gary, yeah, go ahead and text. So you put that in the, in the message for Final Jeopardy. That way you can show me. I don't know. I wonder if I can private chat with you guys. Let's see. Um... Uh, There's a cat walking on my roof right now. And <laughs> I don't even have a cat. That's funny. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put the final Jeopardy question up here and hopefully somebody from team, oh, no, before I give you guys the question, you have to send me your wager. So team one, you have 36 points and team two, you have 34 points. So team two, you guys are on their mind right now. Go ahead and send me how much you would like to wager. And uh, that would be NNE and Hallie. You guys can decide that. And if you can't communicate with each other, that's fine. Just send me a wager and I'll average it between the two of you. Yeah, so you're going to text me, NNE, through Remind and let me know how much you would like to wager. You guys have 3,400 points. Gary, have you been able to get on Remind yet? That way you can do it for your team. All right, I got NNE's wager. Hallie, if you'd like to weigh in, and then I'll just average them together. Anybody else from team one? Let's see, Ethan's gone. He had to go to class. Uh, normally, we only run this until 1030, but because of the technical issues. Um, we got Nix. Nix, you could answer for team one, or Gary. I think that's all we got. Uh Okay. All right, I'm texting them back. And I still need team one, if we've got anybody. Team one, is anybody out there from team one who wants to send me a remind? Uh, how much do you guys want to wager? Well, you can't talk about it in front of the other team. That's, that's why I'm just letting you choose, Nix. So it's up to you, man. Is up to you. Team two, um, we already got your wager, so you're good. 
Nix, you need to um, sign into the the remind so you can let me know. I don't know. I don't think there's a way to, that I can private chat on here. I don't think. I have to see. I think I can only like private chat if you're a guest. All right. I'm going to give you guys a couple more minutes. And if not, I'm just going to pick a wager for team one. Remember, team one, you have 3,600. How's online school going for you guys? Do you like it better than going to school or do you would you rather go to school? I think I'm definitely in the rather go to school pile. <laughs> Although I did this YouTube channel before we went to online, so I was kind of already set up, which was good, but I miss seeing everyone. All right, Nix, were you able to get into the remind yet? I, don't, I haven't seen you pop up yet. Uh, let's see. Hi, Missy. This is Clara. I took world history last year. Hi, Clara. Good to see you. How's it going for you? Good to see you. Uh, oh, okay, let's see. Oh, now I got a bunch rolling in. Okay, so uh, Gary says, I hate it. Hostway says, it is a better schedule. That's true. Uh, I don't think I learned more. Okay, that's interesting. I would like it a lot better if we weren't in quarantine. Yeah, me too. <laughs> kind of, diff well, at least since we're in quarantine, you can't really go anywhere, so you gotta work on your school stuff, right? Takes me five times longer to do things because of distractions. Me too. I get so distracted. It's really difficult. I'll take, okay, technical issues, Nix. Okay, all right, Nix, I'll just choose a wager for you guys. Um, Hallie says, I'd rather be in school. How long do you think we'll be quarantined? You know, I don't know. I I will probably stay quarantined for longer than what they, uh, they require us to be just because I really don't want to get sick. I hate being sick. So I'm probably going to try to stay in quite a bit, but, um, it sounds like they're going to start opening some stuff up back on, uh, on Monday here in Houston. I don't know. Where are you guys at in any, I, I'd like to know. Um, I have some super overdue library books and I don't know what will happen with my fees. Hey, don't worry about that. I'll help you out. You, you know the librarian. You know what I'm saying, Carla? You 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 got a, a connection. <laughs> so don't worry about the fees. Just make sure that when we open back up or uh, if we collect laptops, you can probably bring them back then. I just don't know exactly how that's all going to work. So just uh, keep them for now. Keep them safe. We'll get them for, for you. All right. Gary says uh, they shut us down for next month too. Where are you guys at, Gary? Ashley, you're in LA. Oh yeah. I've heard it's really bad out in LA. Yeah, definitely be careful. Uh, I don't want you guys to get sick. Uh, Holly says, um, I can say though, since we haven't been in school, I used to get sick every month, like a cold and stuff, but I haven't been sick once since January. That's cool. You might want to consider like doing something um, for your immune system. Like there's like um, emergency and stuff. I've been taking a lot of that and that seems to help me. Nix is in Florida. Oh, I love Florida. I totally wanted to move to Florida because there are better beaches there than there are in Houston. But I'm here in Houston, which I like Houston, too. But I love Florida, California, Gary. OK, sweet. All right. You guys are all over. This is so cool. I, I think it's just so cool that like we can access this kind of technology to be able to talk throughout you know, the world. If you guys haven't subscribed yet, you might want to do that. And then you'll get notifications because I'm going to be doing a lot of DBQ stuff and um, living on YouTube basically for the next couple weeks until you guys take the test. Uh, all right. So awesome. We've made some new friends today. This is so cool. Indiana. All right. I'm from Ohio originally. So that's awesome. All right. Uh, near Chicago. Okay, cool. I love Chicago, but I've heard it's bad in Chicago. I've got a friend that lives there. Uh, Oh, thanks, Gary. I appreciate that. I like Mr. Himmler. He's awesome. He's a little bit more funny than I am, I feel like. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we, you know, 
we're, we're, we're kind of buddies. I've, I've talked to him a couple times. I really like him. He's a cool guy. Um, and I like his videos. His videos are cool. I like to do lives a little bit more just for the interaction side of it. Uh, and it's a little bit easier because editing videos takes forever. Okay. So challenges to state power. Yeah, he does talk insanely fast. You're right. So that, that is true. You could probably slow him down a little bit, but then he might sound like this, then that wouldn't be as <laughs> funny. <laughs> okay, guys, uh, let's go with this final Jeopardy. Now, the only thing is um, we could do Zoom Jeopardy. Yeah, that would be fun. It might be a little bit more loud, though. I, I don't know how that would work. And the problem, the reason why I like to do it on YouTube is because when you've got like competing videos, it's kind of hard to tell who answers first. I've done it with my class on Teams in Microsoft and it's really hard to kind of tell. So that's why here, like as soon as the comment pops up, I can tell. Uh, Gary says, I do, but it takes too long to take notes and stuff. Okay, you mean like, oh, just slow it down. I see what you're saying. Yeah, mm -hmm. All right. Bye, Gary. Uh, we'll catch you next time. We will be live tomorrow for a DBQ. So if you want to come on by that time, you can. All right. See you later. OK, so um, team one, I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to get your answer. Um, who else is on? Is anybody? Oh, Gary just left. He was on team one. Okay. You know what? Let's just call it a game and not do the final jeopardy for points. And then if you guys want to, you can just drop your final jeopardy answers into the chat and, um, we'll just, we'll just go with that. All right. Because that way team one won't have to worry about sending it to me. So here's your question. Explain one historical situation in the period of 1450 to 1750 in which state power was challenged by internal pressures. Now, here's a, this is a lot of words, right? This is what College Board loves to do to you guys. <laughs> they like to try to scare you with a bunch of words. But basically what this is asking is, during this time, how did internally, uh, how did these internal challenges pressure the state? Bye, Holly. Uh, Holly, sorry. Bye, Holly. <laughs> See you next time. All right, Nick, that's cool. That's cool. My, my students love the competition part, so that's why I always do competitions. Okay, uh, so how did this happen? How did internal challenges pressure the state's power? Think about rebellions. I'll give you guys a couple minutes to type up an answer. There's a whole chapter on this in the AMSCO book in unit four. And then he says the Manchu in China and additionally with the Mughal empire since Aurangzi was less religiously tolerant than Akbar and the people revolted after he killed a Sheikh guru. Yeah, so that one would work. Mm -hmm. Definitely that one would work. Very good. Um, some other ones during this time frame. Think about Russia. What what happened in Russia and in Africa? There are a couple that are going on during that time frame too. Or going on during this time frame. The Cossacks, yeah. So that would be Pugachev Rebellion, right? Very good. And that one was shut down by Catherine the Great. I've been doing a lot of reading about her. She's a very interesting person. I think that makes history a little bit more interesting when you kind of can get to know the people a little bit more. And one uh, downfall of the world history curriculum, it doesn't really give us time to go that in depth. All right, and then don't forget about Queen Nzinga in Africa. Remember, she's the one that sided with the Portuguese for a little while, and then they ended up disagreeing, and she um, went, she left and took her people and started Matamba. That one is in Unit 4 as well. Would the African Kingdom trading of people result in internal pressures? Since they traded, uh, 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, there there are internal pressures and challenges in Africa because of the slave trade and because of trading and all of that. But when it's asking for you to like do something specific like this, they're probably wanting more of uh, like revolts and revolution type things. If you can explain, though, an a specific example of how trading gunpowder and other things led to problems, then that would be okay. But you have to be able to explain it. And that's that's the problem. You have to know details. All right, good job, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining today. I had a lot of fun. I hope you guys had fun too. I love it when we have kids from all over the country because it's just, it's cool. It's nice to like be able to have like this uh, world classroom. We need to get some like international students to join us. That'd be fun. So one last thing before I go, tomorrow we will be live doing a DBQ. If you're interested in practicing that DBQ before I go over it in the live, you can shoot me an email. Let me put my email down here and I will send you the DBQ that we are going to be working on. That way you can look at it today and then check yourself tomorrow if you want to listen to the live. Also during that live, you can ask questions. It starts at seven central time. I will have it on my YouTube channel after the live is over though, if you can't join in. So thank you again so much. You're so welcome, Anani. I had a great time. I'm super glad that you guys joined. We will be back next week, Tuesday at 9.30 to do another round. So um, join in if you can. And once the test gets a little bit closer, I'll also be putting out a little bit more about the DBQ and how to organize your notes and get ready for the exam as well. So keep an eye on that. All right, guys, I'm going to sign off here and I will see you next time. Have a great day.